basically that's a that's a that's I mean, it's just a different different version of the secret ballot, is it not? It's not secret. Amongst us. The thing is, and if they don't agree, then we can have the top two that get it. And, sure. on. Make a motion. Yeah. and I think you're asking no, for a legal somebody. opinion. I don't want to do anything that where we have to ask for a legal opinion. My recommendation okay. is to make recommendations um, yep. and then vote on your candidate of choice. I've already been here We'll narrow it down that way. Speak up. Hey, folks. Yeah, that's what I want to do. Why can't we just all go back here to the room and they just go and because, say, okay, Because you guys, you guys are sitting You guys have the right to hear yeah. what we want to do. And, and this My motion. Open, this is an open public meeting. My you guys are no different than than Give Joe Schmarcatelli that walks in here and sets that. Yep. My motion is this, that we vote like we normally do. If there's two, the, the top two vote winners, if we can't decide, we'll do a special meeting or something like that. Thank you, nomination. Nominate like we normally do, but if we cannot decide, we'll go from there. Well, if you can't decide, if you come to a tie, then I break the tie. I don't want that. We, we, we don't want that. No offense to you, but so just, oh. just make it just, just vote and see what happens. Is it considered secret if they go into a closed session? Yes. Yeah, they yes. They they can't have that. I, I, well, I know at least one person who'd have a problem with that. I, I, think, I think we've got it. Open the floor for the right. automation and see what happens from uh, there. Then we'll just go ahead and proceed. At this thing. time, I will open the floor for nominations. Uh, I nominate Justin Martin. And I will second that nomination. And do we have any other nominations? Well, actually, a second is not required. Yeah, second is not a second required. is not required. That's just simply a nomination. All right. <coughs> We do this every 18 months, and it's a mess every single time. We're, we're going to fix it. Yes. No, we're not. <laughs> Any nominations? I nominate yeah. Kelly Stewart. Any others? Mr. Edwards, do you have a nomination? I would just vote to give myself two votes for the rest of the term, but you guys probably don't like that idea. Um, I could live with either one of those two guys. I think they both have strong points, and um, I let's have a discussion. If that's the two people that you guys are interested in focusing on, let's talk. Who do you feel? I, I would have nominated uh, Justin Martin as well. Okay, so let's vote there. That's what the commission wants. I don't want to do another one. Hey guys, thank you very much. Okay. I'm going to vote. Uh, discussion? On the I think, I think both gentlemen possess the qualities that we're, that we're looking for. I think that, uh, I think either, either one of them is a viable candidate. Uh, <laughs> I'm not going to campaign for either one of them. I have my, my uh, I think both of them would do an excellent job as a commissioner. Um, I, I, I have no problem with Mr. Stewart, but Justin Martin has been here and been to meetings. Either one gets it, I don't care, but I feel Justin Martin has been here and has been trying and actively wanting this position. That's my two cents. I'm okay either way. I know that Justin's been coming to the meetings. Uh, I know Kelly's been to several meetings recently. Um, I know one thing uh, that happened, you know, we appointed Justin to the Planning and Zoning Commission, and you, Justin, you didn't address that in your speech, you know. So I've, I've never been really, you sent me an email when you first applied addressing why you, <sighs> It's, it's kind of a personal issue, but I, I just, uh, the one concern I have is appointing you to a position when we appointed you to one just a few months ago and you were only on there for a few weeks and you, you bowed out. Um, 
what I, I genuinely, I've known you for years. We went to school together, and I know you're going to be a city commissioner someday. It may be tonight. That being said, you know me. You know yeah. I was surprised it happened the first time. I was too. Yeah. So. I can address it. I don't feel it's needed. I, that's, I don't think that's needed. Do you feel it's I, my, cons my, only, my main concern about it is it's <laughs> over the last week, the people that have discussed with me the, you know, the issue about, well, who are you going to appoint? Uh, the two big topics of conversation was that issue and people who thought that Jim Taylor Junior was Jim Taylor Senior. So, and I set the record straight on that. And for that matter, uh, Jim, I'd vote for you. I, I, I'm serious, and I, I know that your dad and I have a lot of history, but that's your dad. And I know that you've done a lot for the community, and you're, you're a business person. So I, I can find positives about each one of these folks. Do you want to nominate? All of them. Do I want to nominate somebody? Yeah, do you want to nominate? And we are just a matter of months away from uh, another election yes. as well. Yeah. So you'd be, yes. I call for the vote. I call for a vote. All right. Uh, let's start with. Uh, let's let Cindy run the poll. All right. I'll just uh, call you May. We have had uh, two nominations. Commissioner Taylor <coughs> nominated Justin Martin. Commissioner Williams nominated uh, Kelly Stewart. I'll call the names and you tell me who you vote for. Commissioner Evans. Kelly Stewart. Commissioner Kassler. Justin Martin. Mayor Faulkner. Justin Martin. Commissioner Williams. Kelly Stewart. I'll either break the tire or you guys can leave vote. Have you ever broken a tie before? What's that? Have you ever broken a tie before? I, I think I did one time. Okay. I think there was another time that was going to come down to it, and I think you said you were not going to put me in that position. So you well, that's because I've tried before and it didn't work. <laughs> I don't. <laughs> so we need to discuss any more. Any more discussion? No, my vote's not changing. I think we're pretty much. I think we're all pretty much. Uh, at where we're at, I think the the votes already been taken, and I think the statute calls for you to the ordinance. I'm sorry, calls for <laughs> you to break the tie. I don't want to do that. You can choose or flip a coin, or I don't want to. Well, that's the that's the system. I mean, nothing. Our other option would be just to wait a couple of weeks. Um, but I think that we we we're circumventing the 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 um, resolution when we take a vote. Yeah. Yeah. I mean the the uh, ordinance says in case the remaining number of board commissioners cannot agree upon some eligible person, then they shall call in the city attorney who should cast a decisive vote. So if you can't agree, then I'll cast a decisive vote. But I would encourage you to try so to So everyone's set for him on who they want. I mean, if you guys don't want to throw it to him, you could write the names down on a piece of paper and have him draw one of them. I think that that's not fair. That, uh, unfortunately, mm. you are in a position that you have to make the decision. <laughs> that's fine. I mean, I will do so. I just want to make sure you're out, you are at a pass. Let's call it again, just so we know. <laughs> Commissioner Williams. Kelly Stewart. Mayor Faulkner. Justin Martin. Commissioner Castle. Justin Martin. Commissioner Edwards. Kelly. I tried. <laughs> <laughs> Tonight, and I think he brings a different perspective 
to the commission that's not currently represented on the commission. Okay. See, Justin, I told you you'd be a commissioner someday. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But now I've got a fence to mend. <laughs> Congratulations. Uh, as far as swearing in, we'll do that uh, this evening or the next. I can do it now or I can Please. Do it I want to get on the ball. Let's, uh, Let's go ahead and uh, get on with it. Justin, you could please come forward. She's got this memorized. Tuesday at the city pool. Again, it was a great uh, success. Uh, probably, I guess, man, uh, 1,400 people or, or month, uh, more. Um, I just wanted to thank everybody, especially um, the city pool staff and all the city departments and other organizations that uh, came out and, and supported us and uh, contributed to its success. Well, 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 well. I'm I was such an adversary of your department before you arrived 10, 12, 14 years ago because I just saw so much that was wrong down there. And if somebody had told me, they're laughing because they know how just at loggerheads I was with the, the police department back then, telling me, if somebody had told me 12 years ago that I would feel as positive about our police department as I do now, I would have called them a liar. And I, I, I actually don't like crowds of people, so I didn't get out of my car. I drove up there because I only heard about the crowd you had last year at your first national night out. I thought, that's a lot of people. I wonder what that looks like up there. So I drove, I drove up there. You guys are doing, you and your department are doing things that are just, they're, they're phenomenal. And they are changing a lot of people's attitudes about I think law enforcement officers in general, and I really appreciate what your department's done up there and what you do every day. Well, thank you very much, and uh, I wish I could take all the credit, but we've just got an outstanding group of uh, men and women working for us that, that do all the work, and, and, and they're doing a great job, and I tell the public all the time that you, you get what you expect. You get what you expect from your government. You get what you expect from your police department, so expect a lot. Thank you. And, and I think our community should, and, and we're glad to be there. Thank you. Good job. You, I want to say I had fun up there. I was in the dunk tank. That's right. Was a little bit. Very popular. <laughs> Very Thank popular. You. Thank you for it's not popular for some people, but I enjoy it. My kids enjoyed it, and I hope we do it. Keep on doing it every year. I hear it. I heard news that night. Tulsa does it. Some other places do it. But thank you for opening up your office and be able to sit down and talk with you. I know some people in the past might not like that, but you, you open, you are there for that. So I appreciate that. Certainly. Thank you very much. We appreciate your open door, Chief. Thank you. Thank you. I wish he'd been the police officer that pulled me over and do it last night. I might not have gotten a ticket. I got a speeding ticket last night. Huh? I got a speeding ticket last night in Dewey. It's the first one I've had in like 20 years. I just want to show you an example of one of our cleanup yeah. coffee bill campaign signs. I know that uh, some of you have seen these around. I think Mr. Williams may have a question regarding this. 
but we officially have started that campaign. Um, so you'll start to see things rolled out through the media, through the city's Facebook, uh, with some videos and some different efforts. We're really trying those events that we've had that have filled 67 dumpsters or, or done six, just tons of stuff, hundreds of volunteers, uh, thousands of tires. Those are good, but those haven't gone where we need them to go as far as changing the mindset uh, and the mentality of the community to let some people know um, this, that some of what's allowed or, or, or has been allowed to go on shouldn't. Uh, it's try, trying to reinstill the pride in the community and the neighborhoods. I think everyone tonight has touched on the idea that if you clean up the neighborhoods, people will want to reinvest, people will want to live there. Um, so it's an educational campaign. It, it goes from trying to teach things to little kids uh, with activity books uh, to flyers and handouts and things that are for the adults as well. Another big opportunity for us as far as changing um, our community, probably the biggest opportunity we have is the East Coffee Bill Redevelopment Plan. We did finally get a draft of it. I passed that on to CBR and Refinery and Fertilizer. Uh, probably take about two weeks for staff uh, from the city and their side to get through this uh, and, and give them any recommended changes and then we'll have uh, have the folks from Oxner Hair and Hair come down here and have the public hearing opportunity for commission input, opportunity for public input, uh, and hopefully develop a real plan towards revitalizing uh, from the flood that happened seven years ago. That's, uh, that's all I have right now. I have a question. Yes, sir. In reference to the sign, if you come back up here so we can sure. hear you. I've uh, learned that the signs are permissible to be put in the city right away. Uh -huh. That is correct. Okay. Yes. They what, how, hold on. We have battled with folks and battled with people and asked them not to put their signs in the, in the city right away. We've had issues with campaign signs and we've asked people to move their campaign signs from this over to on their property off the city right away and then we send the exact wrong message to the people that says this sign's permissible but that sign's not according to the ordinance the only two signs that are permissible are construction signs by contractors and real estate signs and where did it say in the statute that they could put these signs in there and who circumvented that who circumvented the the ordinance. I, I don't think the ordinance has been circumvented at all. Um, now, I understand your position, and I, and I have an appreciation for that, because you don't want to send a, a, a message that there's a double standard. But the bottom line is, these are city-owned signs. City-owned signs go on city-owned property, which is uh, the right of way, the spot that we own uh, between the sidewalk and the street. We couldn't legally put our sign in someone else's property any more than they could put their sign in our property. If we give them to people, they're allowed to put them in their yard. Uh, I have one in my yard. Other people have them in their yard. But as a, as a city-owned sign, if we're going to place it, the only place we can really place it is on property that we own. But doesn't that kind of circumvent the spirit of the law? I don't know that it does, because what you're trying to get out is a, a message, a public message about cleaning up can they not see that sign? Can see. Ten foot back. I, I, I'm not saying that that's, that that's. Seems in poor taste. I, I think, I, I think, I think what we have set up here and done is we have made an effort to make people or to advise people to remove those signs, and then we come back and then we put the very same sign, the very type of sign, right in the right in the place that we told them to take it out. And I can see. And, 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 that's and the thing mind. is, is that. The other thing is, is there's a difference between a street sign, there's probably ordinances that govern street signs versus these little signs. These are these are yard signs, not street signs. I do so. Okay. And the other thing is, is here's my question is, is that you want to come put one in my yard, maybe I don't want one in my yard. 
Did you go up and ask them? Did you go up and ask them? No, we're, we're giving them out to people. We're giving them out to people. We had a booth at National Night Out. We've got flyers that have gone out. We've got information going out. Our goal is to give out all of these signs so that people voluntarily place them in properties that are well maintained. To set it on their property. They're on their property. And the, the right of way is not their property according to the, the, the ordinance. The right of way is not their property. They are required to maintain from the from the center of the alley to the center of the street in areas where there are alleys. So this this calls for a this calls for a, a again a legal question. Are these street signs or are they yard signs? I don't know. This is the first I've heard about this issue. Well uh, this having used a couple of different terms there. I'll uh, open up an old room and, and uh, go in the opposite direction. If it's okay for the city to put a sign on right of way that I'm required to maintain, there are those who are going to say, and this commission has the power to change that ordinance, should we choose to after discussion, at some point, if I have a if uh, I have a friend who's running for office and I want to put a vote for Joe Blow in my front yard that I maintain that also happens to be the city right of way, or I'm an individual with a having a yard sale and I want to put a single sign sale in my own yard. What's to prevent me from doing that? Aside from the fact that we have an ordinance that says we can't. I mean, we could change the ordinance. Is that an item for discussion? Uh, you know, is it is it reasonable to expect that an individual can put a single vote for Joe Blow in your front in the front yard that's on the right of way between the sidewalk and the curb, or a yard sale sign that has to come out after the sale's over? I mean, is, is that an item for discussion? Can we just meet in the middle and say? Why don't we do what we're telling everybody else to do? Just put yeah. your sign back if, 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 you are. if it's your direction that these signs not be placed in the right of way, then I'll ask you to move yours, and I'll ask other people to move theirs, and they can put them in. There we are. There we are. I, I'm, I'm not hung up on this. Well, my, my, I'm not. My I, problem is, my hung up this is, is that we have an ordinance, and we arbitrarily, in my opinion, and we don't have a legal opinion yet, so in my opinion, we are just arbitrarily. I don't think it's arbitrary. I think if the city's going to place a sign, the only place we can put it is on our property. But you didn't place the sign. You gave those signs to people to take home. We did give them to people who volunteered to sign up for them and take them home. Yes. But, so you didn't place the sign. And those should be in there yard. Well, well, I happen to have one of the free nuts of those signs in my front yard on the city right away. I'm also one of those individuals that thinks if, if I have a uh, vote for Joe Blow sign that I ought to be able to put it right there beside him. And we can provide people, if it's the direction that you want to go, we can provide people with guidance that we would like them to place these in their yard, and we'll leave it at that. I, I agree with the mayor. You ought to be able to place a sign in front of your house. If it's your house, you ought to be able to you can maintain it. But the thing is, is that my problem is, is we're either going to do that or we're not, but we can't say, tell people, get your signs off the right way, and we go around and collect all their signs off out in front of their house and pitch them in a back of a truck and take them down here, and then we let them put signs out there. We just don't make sense. What was the original ordinance wrote for? Was it a safety issue, a right issue, what was it? I don't know. It's 1916. Right there, a blight. I, I, I have they don't pick the signs up. They'll put a garage sale sign out. They'll have the garage sale. They'll leave it for two or three weeks if nobody comes back. Yeah, I'm not saying, no, the under utility pools, no. That's, that's, you can't go there. And as far as me putting a sign in someone else, on someone else's property without their consent, no. What is but it? I'm talking about in my own front yard. I think that I haven't said anything, I'm going to say this. I think the best course of action is for us to be leaders, and by us, I mean the city government, and I think that we should hold ourselves to an equal or greater standard than what we hold our individual citizens to. 
And as far as the rummage cell signs, if I had my way, I'd never see another one in my entire life. I've driven through Bottlesville extensively over the last four weekends, and that is rummage cell hell on Fridays, Saturdays, and Sundays. There are so many rummage cell signs in the right of ways. It junks up. It looks like a completely different town for those three days of the week because people down there just put rummage and garage cell signs everywhere. And you know, window tinting signs and this business and that. They just put them everywhere by the stoplights and on the corners. So I support us cleaning up the, the, the junky signs out of the right of ways, including in front of people's houses. But I think that we should leave our citizens and ask that they, you know, put these signs in their front yards, not in the right of way. I have a sign. We've also, we've also just and I need a sign out. <laughs> We're taking a proactive approach to this and, and having people volunteer for these signs and and making them pledge that if they're going to put a sign in their yard, they're going to meet certain standards because we don't want to send the message that clean up coffee bill and somebody drives by and there's a house that doesn't meet the standards and people think, oh, well, that must be good enough because they've got the sign. I've already talked with, uh, with Mr. Bremen and his staff, we had a meeting on this last week to try and make sure everybody was on the same page. I know that we didn't all agree on everything, but I think we have a, a workable solution. Your input is, is valuable, and we'll make sure that if people have a sign, they put it in their yard. If we take it, we won't take it and throw it away. We'll just put it back into their yard. So that's I think we so don't want to lose sight of the fact that we have a, a campaign to try and clean up the community and that we're trying to educate people on on the appearance. I think it's great people want to put it in the yard in the first place. I think this is, to me, this is about the biggest issue as Paul and Clarence left out, I'll be honest with you. It's either do it or do it. It's whatever. Just tell people to put it back on coffee with Facebook page or whatever else and just let it be. It, it, if there's no reason to crucify somebody just because of it. I like your sign. I think we're going to follow the same rule that we're talking about. It's not unreasonable. Well, we just no might suggest then that we just no fun at least for the interim, uh, we'll take uh, Commissioner Edwards' suggestion and uh, ask those people who have signs to place them in their yard, not on the right of way. And then we'll take this up for uh, further discussion at uh, subsequent meetings. Sounds good. And the whole yard sign uh, sign issue we'll uh, we'll address later. I think yard signs in general needs to be there. Yes. I have another question. Where are we at on this new generation? Where are we at on the new generation? Mm -hmm. uh, I need to meet with Dean uh, uh, and Mike uh, to wrap up the request for qualifications for an owner's engineer. And uh, I hope to do that tomorrow. I'd like to see that done, like, yesterday. Can you make that happen? We've got to, we've got to get that going. We do? Uh -oh. Yeah, we do. I'm very adamant that that needs to be done. Fine. Okay. Well, I'm not essential if GRDA is going to pay for it, we might as well build it. Uh, and we need to get, there's a lot of different ways to do that. We have the agreement with the RDA uh, amended rule that, that shows that they'll pay for it before we start incurring a lot of costs on it. We've got a few different things working, but. Well, what I'm saying is, is that if we're not progressing forward, I mean, I've seen, when was that meeting? And it seems like it's just, yeah, yeah, I mean, it's just like the insurance thing. Where are we at on the health insurance thing? Uh, we, Still, still sitting here, treading water. Yesterday, we met with them yesterday. They came all the way from Kansas City down here to meet with us. They do uh, have coverage right now, though. Yeah, everybody's got coverage. We're Same talking about how to that. change it. We're talking about um, whether or not they enter into an agreement with the hospital to try and uh, keep our business local and, and steer our folks it's towards that so that it can benefit them, but also save us money. Um, so where are we at? We met yesterday. They expect to have some 
uh, information for us, some new numbers and everything, probably within the next two weeks, and we told them that we would either have a special meeting with the commission. Did they give you any indication as to what ballpark estimate kind of increases we'd be looking at? Well, it's not an increase okay. because we, had, we were trying to save money, right. but it's not, I don't think it's nearly the money that we had hoped to save uh, off of where we ended up last time. Okay. Uh, in testing the, the insurance market, they said you just have um, bad experience with, the, with your claims. And our claims, and our, that's what drives our costs. Uh, but it's a more proactive approach towards preventative maintenance. Um, trying to do health screenings and, and things like that in advance to try and stop problems up front before they become serious, which I think ultimately leads to healthier employees anyways. More money we need to buy a more health club so where, membership. Where, where are we at on the downtown study on the... Uh... The downtown traffic study, they got us some numbers about two weeks ago. They got us the initial numbers. Uh, I know that I had reviewed those. I'm not sure whether or not Chuck had had a chance. They said we should have a draft of the study this week or next. This week or next. Um, it's considerably less expensive than we had originally thought it might because it's kind of a, a for lack of a better term, it's a value engineering approach to what we're I have some concerns, I have some, some comments. Um, July 29th, I went out to the batting cages. We said to participate in that little deal. I had fun. My daughter had fun. Uh, I had the great privilege to be in the Montgomery County paper chronicle showing my uh, unathleticism. Batter up. Batter up. I, I don't know what I could have picked somebody better to take a picture of. Uh, <laughs> but I do salute you guys for doing that. Uh, I have been out there with the kids. They show the same on athleticism, and my wife and I had some fun and went out there just to mess around uh, and do that. I want to say by by saying that I want to say that this is a great deal, but Cottonwood citizens have to go out there and do their part and enjoy it. I talked to David Rains, and he said that that's people from Independence came down. And I want to keep that going. We, we have a history of doing great things at first with these things, and then for some other reason, like our movie theater, it goes away. I don't want to see that. I really don't. Um, that being said, I have talked to these guys. I sent them a text just to choose some ideas of having fun with our staff and staff morality, more staff morale, whatever you want to call it. Uh, <laughs> It's two different things. Yes. Uh, I would like, I invited them to possibly do a softball game with some of the staff. I've also done in the past, I've done uh, a few, which I will do later on. But what I hope to do maybe is just a softball game with commissioners and department head versus some staff, just for fun. Can we make it football or not more? No. <laughs> Look at my size. I love me for both. I was snapped in half. What about my next bed? <laughs> right, boy. Uh, so one day that's great. Uh, I like to do it. If you guys don't want to do it, that's fine. Uh, I want the city staff that we appreciate them, and this is kind of my way of doing that. If you guys don't want to do it, my my feelings will not be hurt at all. Um, I did have a complaint from a citizen about uh, wireless internet. He says it's been bad, and if he's paying the money for it, he needs to be able to have have it taken care of. Um, I was told, this is what I'm being told, that it's, that that the internet people aren't open till past two o'clock. I don't know if that's true, but we need to have someone open till at least eight o'clock just to take 
questions or concerns or something because I'm going to work and I can't get out and uh, and get on my phones by two o'clock. I don't know if it is two o'clock if it's not. Correct me, but something needs to be addressed. Our, our internet technician does leave at two o'clock. We had to adjust hours because of the way the revenues were coming in. We weren't generating enough revenue to justify a full time position. Um, after he leaves, the calls generally come to me. So between eight and five, there is coverage for those calls for the most part. If I'm out of the office doing stuff, I can't handle those calls. They do get returned, but there is no, there is not enough revenue for us right now to do eight o'clock. There's just. Can, can I ask a question? Do you have a, do you have a uh, cell phone, and is it city provided? Yes. Can you not answer that cell phone after five o'clock? If I'm available, sure. Okay, you, and then you would be compensated for, you know. No, I would be compensated. You will be compensated if we decide to compensate you. You should be compensated to be like on call. I'm a salary employee. Oh, all right. You can still be compensated for that, though, if you're on call between you and the other guy. But there again, we have a revenue issue. There is not enough revenue generated to justify the hours that are needed. What, what else is the revenue issue? Is it? Lack of customers, loss of customers. We're, we're, we're doing paying. something. We're, we're, we're moving forward. We're doing something. Yeah. And they're not providing poor service. What I'm saying is, is if you get compensated in a internet and it has a problem, <laughs> six thirty in the evening, you can get on the phone and call Cox Cable Internet, and you can get somebody on the phone to help you. But if you have the city of Coffee Mill Internet at six thirty in the evening, who do you call? Oh, I know. There's nobody alive to take the call. Okay. So if we're going to run a internet utility, should we not provide the service, or are we just kind of like a ranky dink service, evidently? No, we'd love to be able to, to do a 24-hour help desk. We just we can't. They don't do a 24-hour help desk either. They answer the phone up until 9 or 10 o'clock. Is it permissible that you can answer the phone up until nine or ten o'clock? How many how many calls do you fill between five p.m. and let's say ten p.m. on your answer machine? I don't know. I have to look. Could we? Uh, not that many. Could you stagger him with a part-time guy? We have. That's what I'm saying. That's we have a part-time part guy. guy. He has a job after this. I can't. I can't force him to take calls if he's not available. So for, for some people to sit at home and and be on call, they may get a dollar an hour. And then if they get called to, to a service or, or whatever, then they're, of course, your salary, but that would kick in. There's got to be some way that we can work out that where somebody answers the phone until a reasonable amount of time. Because if I have, if I have a, a internet service that I'm, that I'm paying for, and then, you know, hey, at 8 o'clock at night, I need some help, then I should be getting a hold of somebody. If we're not going to do it right, then we don't need to be in the business. It's just like the, you know, if you, your electric goes out, we run the electric utility, someone's there to answer the phone. If you're not going to do that, then you don't need to be in the electric same thing with the internet business. The more, the more monkeys you pile on yourself, well, then you need to, you need to be committed to. So, from a service perspective, I'm trying to think through. Uh, it was kind of a worst case scenario call. Uh, at what point? You know, do you say, okay, here's a uh, here's a trouble report number, and we'll take care of it in the morning, because it's an equipment. It looks like it's an equipment failure on our part. Or do you want to go uh, climb up at the top of the stadium at 10 o'clock at night to uh, fix an access point? I don't think you're going to do that. We, you know, we have done that. If it's a major outage like that, we go out as as quick as possible. But as it stands right now, I would be the only one going out. At what point do we say that maybe this ain't the business for us if we can't do it the way everybody wants to do it and uh, concentrate our efforts on 
something else with inside the city. As it currently stands, it's not the way I want to do it. But like I said, we have plans to change how we operate. Can, can I, let me just ask one question. This is you said if it's a major outage, then someone goes out. How do you know if it's a major outage and no one answers the phone at 5 o'clock? We know when our equipment goes down. We know when we have an outage. So if it's a major outage affecting a tower, two towers, all towers, the whole city, we know. Do you get compensated for that time? No. He's salaried. He's not, paid, he's not paid extra for being there. Back in the issue, we have the capability of uh, uh, accessing the cyber from a remote location in order to you probably should fix a software issue. Yes. Okay. Yeah. Okay. You got a point. Can you give us some solutions, some possible solutions at some point in the next meeting or two? Thank you. Okay. All right. And you can do it with you sometimes. You can catch me up. I don't know what I'm talking about. You'll find it out. Right? You, you, will, you will be getting a uh, tour of the departments and a briefing on all of the department projects that are going on, right. and that should get you up to speed. Are you sure? I haven't gotten that yet. Thank you, uh, Mr. Manager. Can you take care of that? All right. Yes. Mm -hmm. I was going to ask for We will be getting a, a tour. And you say you've never had a, a tour? These two never got one. I never had one either. Okay, let's get uh, that taken care of. You guys are coming? My, those we're people don't want to see me again. Uh, Kate. One other thing, once we get this thing rolling on this new generation, can, if it's prior to the meeting, can you send us a, an update on where we're at? Sure. Mary, has the sun come up yet? I don't know, but it sure is past my bed. <laughs> Are there any other questions? Yes, sir. Do we have an executive session or not? Do we need an executive mm -hmm. session? Anyone? Call it out. I wish we had a 24. Gary, this place any more comments from staff? Bend your ear. We are adjourned. Amen.